All right, so this could very well be one of my favorite lessons um, or topics in forensics. Today, we're going to talk about the Innocence Project. Um, but before we do this, I want you to complete the three, two, one review activity. Um, you can pause the video and just on a sheet of paper, jot down three reasons why forensic investigators need good observation skills. Give me two examples of ways that that information can be stored or information in general can be stored as short-term memory. And then one example of a way that we can be good eyewitnesses. All right, now the Innocence Project, I don't know if you are familiar with it or not. Um, it is one of those things when I started teaching forensics many years ago, I had not heard of it. Um, but I, over the years, I've done extensive research on the Innocence Project, and it is extremely interesting. Um, but now I hear it all over the place, I guess, because I recognize it in more places. And you will probably be the same way after we talk about um, this project today. You will probably notice it, e even if you have never heard of it before. You'll start to recognize it. All right, so the Innocence Project, what is it? It is a, um, well, currently, it is a project that was headed or created by two, two guys, and the purpose is to help to exonerate wrongfully convicted people. Um, and they do that through science and technology and the advancements of science and technology. So as science develops and finds its way into forensic applications, these guys have created a nonprofit organization that hires attorneys that seek to use this new these new advancements in forensics to um, exonerate people who are in prison wrongfully. And there are a surprising number of cases where they have found people are in prison um, based solely on eyewitness accounts. And later they find out through forensic evidence that that person or those people do not belong in prison. Um, and they're able to sort of close some of the cases. So Barry Sheck and Peter Newfield are the two guys that created the Innocence Project. They did this in 1992. And that year is significant because if you'll remember from biology in 1992, is also around the same time that DNA advancements were being made and their application, DNA fingerprinting, and its application to forensics was just coming about. And so these two things sort of merged. So the purpose, again, of the Innocence Project is to re-examine post-conviction cases. That means these people have already been convicted of a crime and exonerate those that do not belong um, in prison or do not belong um, to have those those convictions. Now, they mainly use the advancements of DNA evidence to provide conclusive proof of either guilt or innocence. So sometimes they um, they free innocent people, but sometimes they discover that the person is in fact guilty based on scientific evidence and that they belong in prison. Now, at the recording of this video, the Innocence Project has reevaluated over 360 cases, and 87 of those have been wrongful convictions. Now, that's pretty powerful. 360 cases, those are growing each day because the Innocence Project is get, getting larger and larger, and 87 of those, 87 percent of those are wrongful convictions. So. Remember, eyewitness accounts are not considered scientific evidence. So back in the 70s, back in the 80s, really early 90s, a lot of people were put in prison for crimes based on eyewitness testimony. And now they're going back and using scientific evidence in the form of DNA to exonerate those people because they're able to um, prove that those people are innocent of the crimes that they have been convicted of. Um, we And we've talked about eyewitness accounts and how, how the brain works and those advancements in research have led to this push for the Innocence Project to specifically take on cases where eyewitness accounts were the only evidence in the case. 
So studies have shown that eyewitnesses often give faulty information. Most of the time, this is unintentional, um, but we know that because of the way the brain works, it happens. And for this reason, the justice system frowns upon convictions that are based solely on eyewitness accounts. There has to be some sort of scientific evidence paired with it. So the innocenceproject.org, um, I cannot play it uh, today, but if you will go to their website, there's an introduction video. It's really interesting. It just kind of showcases some of the big cases um, where people were exonerated through this project, through this um, nonprofit organization. Uh, specifically, if you're looking for a case to research, I'm going to share with you one that is pretty interesting. So I'm on the Innocence Project website. This is a guy by the name of Ronald Cotton. And if you search YouTube for Ronald Cotton, there are some really good documentaries over this case. But he was, um, he was convicted of two counts of rape. He was supposed to serve a life sentence plus 50 years. He only served 10 years, and I say only, if you're innocent, that could seem like an eternity. But he served 10 years because um, his, a lady by the name of Jennifer Thompson was attacked, assaulted, and raped in 1984, and she identified him as her um, attacker. And later, it was determined through DNA samples that were collected at the scene and kept that um, he was not her attacker. They were actually able to find the person who actually attacked um, Jennifer Thompson. And so there's a lot of documentaries and really interesting articles written about this case. If you're in my forensics class, we're going to watch um, a 2020 episode where they interviewed Ronald Cotton and Jennifer Thompson, and they kind of walk through sort of how it happened. Um, again, very interesting case. This is on the Innocence Project website if you want to know more about it. Now, also, if you are in my class, what we're going to do is I'm going to give you the opportunity to do your own research. Um, so you're going to research a person, and I highly recommend you use the Innocence Project's website. They have all the people that they have um, that they have taken on as clients. They have all those people listed and all the information about their cases. So, and it's a reputable site. So research a person via the innocenceproject.org who has had their conviction reevaluated by the Innocence Project. And remember, some of those post-conviction reevaluations actually established that the person was supposed to be in prison. Um, there's also a famous case that the Innocence Project sort of um, undertook called the Stephen Avery case. That's one that might be interesting to you. You can look into. Um, but if you're my student, you're going to create a banner that showcases your research, and that banner will be for a grade. Um, if you're not one of my forensic students, but your teacher is um, providing this video as a lesson, they will tell you how you can showcase your work. Um, but I think you're going to find this project to be interesting. Um, make sure that you look over the case before you choose it because some of the cases are missing a little information. So pick you a good case and then showcase it and then we'll share it to one another.